Hello, I'm Lance Dalek, a professor of exercise and sports science at Western Colorado University and also a member of the ACE Scientific Advisory Panel. February is American Heart Month and in this month's issue of Certified, I've authored an article on different evidence-based strategies for primordial, primary, and secondary prevention of heart disease. In my video segment, I want to briefly explain, as I do in the article, the differences between these three categories of prevention. And then I also want to highlight a couple of the evidence-based strategies that I've put in this month's article. Uh, before that, I, I do want to say I'm really excited about writing this article because if I go back 25 years, my first professional position was in cardiac rehabilitation. And so heart disease prevention is really near and dear to me. So what are the three different categories of prevention? Primordial prevention means we're simply avoiding risk factors such as high blood pressure or high blood glucose from ever developing. Uh, primary prevention means that uh, over the course of screening, a, a risk factor has been identified and then we bring in strategies to try to modify positively that risk factor. And then secondary prevention means that unfortunately someone has a clinical type of event such as a heart attack. Uh, in the course of their follow-up treatment from that, various risk factors are identified and then a program or a strategy is incorporated to modify, again, positively those risk factors. In a perfect world, primordial prevention would be what we practice, and starting with kids and, and young adults and adopting healthy lifestyles that ensure that the leading risk factors for heart disease, such as low cardiorespiratory fitness or high blood pressure, or obesity, never in fact develop. Uh, and the reason for that is primordial prevention has been shown to be so powerful and so effective uh, in terms of reducing the risk for uh, cardiovascular disease developing or mortality from cardiovascular disease. So one of the studies that I want to share with you is one of my favorite studies of all time, goes back to about 2005-2006. A group of researchers, um, and, and they took this data from the Framingham study, which is an ongoing uh, study in subsequent generations where they've, they've looked at these people over the course of their lifetime and done annual um, surveys and forms of data collection and look at hard endpoints such as you know, developing different chronic diseases, mortality from different chronic diseases. And so in this particular study, what they, what they found that is if individuals could reach 50 risk factor free, that means when they turn 50, uh, which I did earlier this year, when they turn 50 they had no risk factors for heart disease. Uh, those individuals had a really low chance of developing heart disease in their lifetime. About 5% for men and 8% for women. Um, the study also showed that people that reached 50 risk factor free um, lived 8 to 10 years longer. So really, really cool study and really powerful statistics that highlight the importance of primordial prevention. A second strategy that I outline in my paper this month is for secondary prevention. And going back to, as I shared with you, being in cardiac rehabilitation early in my career, I oftentimes had clients ask me, what do I have to do to stop or reverse the process of heart disease? And I didn't know. Well, in the, in the progress or in the process of, of doing my, my research to, to answer this question for my clients, I came across this really awesome study going back to the 90s by a group of researchers from Germany. And what they did is they took a group of individuals with diagnosed heart disease and they did an angiogram where they went in with a catheter and determined how much plaque had built up in the main coronary arteries. And then these individuals did uh, rehabilitation for a year. And then they went back in again with an angiogram to determine the 
severity, uh, the, the progress or the stabilization or the reversal of their uh, atherosclerosis, their, their plaque. And interestingly, they showed that if individuals did enough exercise, that they could actually stabilize the plaque, that it, it got no worse. And more compellingly, they showed that if they did a pretty high volume of exercise, about six hours a week or 2,200 calories per week uh, of exercise, that plaque actually reversed. So this, was, this is a really, really cool study because it shows that even if we have sins early in our life with regard to our health, and we do unfortunately develop um, cardiovascular disease and, and have an event that we can still change that if we do enough of a lifestyle um, change in terms of, of physical activity or exercise. So there's several additional studies that I highlight that give, give you as uh, certified professionals different strategies for, for um, primordial primary and secondary prevention uh, in, in this article. And as I've done today, I've just shared with you a couple of my favorites, uh, but there's some other really good ones in there. So as always, it's a pleasure uh, talking to you and good luck with your clients and enjoy American Heart Month. Take care.